is WGEM News Today, the Tri-State's news leader. Welcome back. Happening today after a two-year pause, area veterans who've served our country are on their way to Washington, D.C. this morning. The Great River Honor Flight Board of Directors says 31 veterans left from Quincy at 2 this morning for St. Louis, where they will fly to our nation's capital. This will be the 58th Great River Honor Flight mission overall since the program started serving the Tri-States in 2010. Since then, 1,855 local veterans have participated in this program. This is WGEN News at 5, the Tri-State's news leader. Well, an honor flight of more than 30 veterans taking off at last to the nation's capital after two years. The Great River Honor Flight returned to Washington, D.C. for the first time since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic for its 58th tour. So the Honor Flight program features a one-day experience for veterans to tour the war monuments on the National Mall and visit the Arlington National Cemetery. Today's tour group was made up of 31 veterans from around the Quincy area. The veterans say that they were humbled and emotional about their 24-hour trip of a lifetime. Dale Swenson served in the Navy during the Korean War and is grateful for the opportunity to experience the honor flight with his son. Honest to God, uh, I'm 90, and I don't know if I'm going to fly again or not. I may ride. <laughs> we're, we're fortunate to have all these memorials and these, these great people. And the message they gave us to keep it going, really important. And the Great River Honor Flight team has four more flights planned for 2022. And then tonight, our very own Brian Inman will be out at the homecoming celebration when they return. So we expect the bus to be returning sometime around 10 tonight. And this is the first homecoming in two and a half years. And so you can come out and celebrate with us. And we will have live interviews at the event coming up tonight on WGEM News at 10. Thank you. 
Good morning. I hope your Honor Flight experience so far has been memorable. There's so much more ahead for you on this special day. Today, you're on your way to see the National Memorials in Washington, D.C., built in your honor. The goal of this Honor Flight is a salute to you in appreciation from your family, friends, neighbors, and country for your service. While you'll have a full schedule during your visit to Washington, D.C., there are three primary memorials that you'll visit today. The World War II Memorial, the Korean Memorial, and the Vietnam Memorial. Each has its own character and design, and each one represents the sacrifice you and so many gave in your military service. Thanks to all you accomplished, today we continue to enjoy the freedoms that come from being an American. We'd like to give you a short tour of each of these special sites in the hopes that through the information we share with you, your enjoyment and understanding of these monuments will be that much more memorable. We begin with the World War II Memorial. It honors the service of 16 million members of the armed forces of the United States of America, the support of countless millions on the home front, and the ultimate sacrifice of 405,399 Americans. On May 29, 2004, a four-day grand reunion of veterans on the National Mall culminated in the dedication of this tribute to the legacy of the greatest generation. This memorial follows the spirit of the original plans for the city of Washington. With the center of government, our nation's capital, at one end of the mall, the Washington Monument honoring the best of the 18th century in the center and the Lincoln Memorial, representing the best of the 19th century at the other end. The World War II Memorial celebrates the legacy of our greatest military conflict and those who played a role in its success. Granite, bronze, and water elements harmoniously blend with the lawns, trees, and shrubbery of the surrounding landscape. Great vistas can be seen from this excellent location. As for the memorial, you will enter through the Pacific Gate, one of two 43-foot pavilions proclaiming America's victory on land, at sea, and in the air in our two theaters of conflict, the Atlantic and the Pacific. 56 granite columns split between two half circles framing the rebuilt rainbow pool symbolize the unprecedented wartime unity among the 48 states, seven federal territories, and the District of Columbia. Bronze ropes tie the columns together, while bronze oak and wheat wreaths respectively represent the nation's industrial and agricultural strengths. The 24 bronze bas-relief panels that flank the ceremonial entrance offer glimpses into the human experience at home and at war. They breathe life into familiar black and white photographs or newsreels. The memorial also features areas where recollections come flooding back, triggered by the sight of dozens of battle names and military campaign designations carved into stone. And in the center of it all, a wall of 4,048 gold stars silently pays solemn tribute to the ultimate sacrifice given by more than 405,000 Americans. Each star represents 100 brave heroes of this conflict. While at the memorial, you are encouraged to search the World War II Registry, a computerized database honoring Americans who helped win the war, either overseas or on the home front. World War II had ended. The country was riding a wave of prosperity, which left the Great Depression as a memory of the past. The soothing sounds of big band music, from Duke Ellington to Tommy Dorsey to Glenn Miller, seemed to catch the mood of the times. America was disarming and returning to peace. Yet in less than five years, unsettled disputes left from World War II began to take center stage. What started as an internal issue in a country most people did not know mushroomed into a major international conflict. In the early morning hours of June 25, 1950, war again erupted as North Korean forces, under the direction of their communist government, invaded South Korea. By the time it ended, some one and a half million American troops would see service alongside forces from 21 other countries. Many remarkable acts of heroism were recorded. 131 servicemen were awarded the country's highest tribute, 
the Medal of Honor. Whether Army, Marine, Navy, or Air Force serving as soldier, chaplain, nurse, clerk, or in supply, many of you were a major part of this international effort to stop active communist aggression. The Korea Memorial was erected by our country's grateful citizens to remember your time and your sacrifice in service of our country. Ground was broken on June 14, 1992, Flag Day, by President George H. W. Bush. He called it a long overdue memorial to America's Korean War veterans, including thousands who died so the enslaved might be free. The memorial was dedicated on June 27, 1995. President William Clinton and the President of the Republic of Korea, Kim Young Sam, were on hand for that dedication. The memorial is designed as a triangle meeting a circle. As you approach it, first you will come to the triangular field of service. Within it, sculptor Frank Gaylord designed 19 larger-than-life statues to portray a squad on patrol. These statues, each 7 feet 3 inches tall, consist of 14 Army soldiers, 3 Marines, 1 Navyman, and 1 Air Forceman, symbolic of their contributions in the war. They also express an ethnic cross-section of America with 12 Caucasian, 3 African American, 2 Hispanic, 1 Asian, and 1 Native American. The figures are all outfitted with various gear to depict a scout, a squad leader, bar gunners, riflemen, radio operator, medical corpsmen, air ground controller, each with full equipment. The figures are advancing out of the woods, the men wearing ponchos indicative of the weather conditions faced in Korea. The last three men are still in the woods, hinting that more are to follow. The rough terrain of Korea is symbolized by juniper bushes and the obstacles soldiers faced by granite strips. The billowing ponchos give motion to the figures so you can imagine a squad advancing through a cold night. Next to the field of service is the granite mural wall. From more than 125,000 photographs of the Korean War, some 2,400 images were selected. These have been sorted and grouped by type of service to reflect the many fields represented during the war. The images stare out of the wall over the platoon of soldiers demonstrating their supporting roles. A lot of thought was given to symbolism. The war lasted 38 months. The final result, a division along the 38th parallel. The mural wall is placed so that it reflects the images of the 19-man platoon to show 38 soldiers. Towards the rear of the memorial is the Pool of Remembrance. This honors the dead, the missing POWs and the wounded from the U.S. and U.N. forces. You can walk out into the pool on a peninsula symbolic of the peninsular shape of Korea. A short wall reminds everyone of the 22 nations that answered the call to war. Two messages are inscribed in the memorial. The first is the reminder that freedom is not free. The second is the dedication message at the point of the triangle. It reads, Our nation honors her sons and daughters who answered the call to defend a country they never knew and a people they never met. A short walk from the Korea Memorial stands the Lincoln Memorial and further down the Vietnam Veterans Memorial or as it's commonly referred to as the wall. It's certainly become one of the most popular tourist attractions in Washington, D.C., with over 4 million visitors each year. First unveiled on November 13, 1982, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial remains an atypical war monument. Its main feature, a V-shaped wall inscribed with the names of over 58,000 United States soldiers killed during the Vietnam War, lacks heroic or patriotic symbols, and its polished black granite facade contrasts with the white marble statues and structures surrounding it on the National Mall. It is 493 feet long and comprised of 142 panels. The names are arranged in chronological order according to the date of casualty. The list starts at the apex or center beginning with 1959 on panel 1E and going out to the east towards the Washington Monument, appearing to recede into the earth with panel 70E. Then it resumes at the end of the West Wall as the wall emerges from the earth with panel 70W in 1968 and ending with the date of 1975 at the bottom of panel 1W. Thus the war's beginning and end meet in the center. Like the World War II Memorial, it was built without the use of government funds. 
Jan C. Scruggs, a wounded Vietnam War vet, studied what is now called post-traumatic stress disorder upon his return to the United States. Within a few years, he began calling for a memorial to help with the healing for more than three million Americans who served in the conflict. He began the process of using $2,800 of his own money to form the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund in 1979. By 1981, some 275,000 Americans, along with corporations, foundations, veterans groups, civic organizations, and labor unions, had given $8.4 million to the project. As for the design, the guidelines stipulated that the memorial should contain the names of every American who died in Vietnam or remained missing in action, make no political statement about the war, be in harmony with its surroundings, and be contemplative in character. Over 1,400 submissions came in to be judged anonymously by a panel of eight artists and designers. In the end, the panel passed over every professional architect in favor of 21-year-old Yale University student Maya Lin, the daughter of Chinese immigrants, who had created her design for a class project. Many people commended Lin's winning design, but others lambasted it as an insult. Eventually, a compromise was reached under which a U.S. flag and a statue of three servicemen were dedicated near the wall in 1984, thereby bringing a visual image beyond that of the names of the overall memorial. Nine years later, yet another sculpture was added of three women caring for an injured soldier. Not only did the controversy quickly quiet down, but the Vietnam Veterans Memorial has since become both widely praised and widely popular. Tens of thousands of so-called artifacts have been intentionally left at the memorial since its opening, including letters, military medals, dog tags, and photographs. These items are collected each day by rangers from the National Park Service and sent to a storage facility in Maryland. It has been referred to as the most beautiful, the most heart-wrenching, the most subtle, and the most powerful of all the memorials. Names continue to be added to the memorial. We hope this short video gives you a good foundation of these three key memorials you will visit today. We are honored to be a part of this special day for all of you and hope it's everything that you hoped it would be and more. From all of us at WGEM and everyone on the board of the Great River Honor Flight, plus the thousands of friends, businesses and individuals that have donated to make this mission a reality, thank you for your service you gave to your country. We are deeply indebted to you. Have a great time.